It's that time of the year when students come back after a great lesson and you say, hey, how did your practice go this week? And they're like, bruh, you were there. And so it begins for lots of music teachers trying to stay creative, stay optimistic, and get students enjoying music and making progress. So in this video, I thought I'd tell you about some of the ways that I love having a guilt-free zone for music practice, but one that still has students seeing improvements week to week. So one of the first things that I look at is supported practice. So sometimes it's just a case of a student looking at the assignments from the previous week and thinking, I don't even know where to start. So if it's that situation with students, then I would dig into analysis. We'd work through patterns and rhythms. We dig into the tricky spots. And I often say to students, what looks the hardest for you in this piece? Because sometimes I assume something might be tricky when actually it's something else that's really a stumbling block for the student. We also dive into unusual markings and unusual rhythms and learn a part of the song together so that they feel really confident to circle back to that. I've also added more listening into my time with students so that we know that they actually get to do it. So listening to pieces and like creating their own ideas about it are often helpful. The other thing I did last year was actually support families in thinking about how to make space for music making because this is a time in history that there is a lot of entertainment available. There's a lot of things that come with ease to students, a lot of other activities that they're involved in so that music practice, if it feels hard, might not feel achievable. So we dove into the topic topic of atomic practice habits and I loved utilizing James Clear's ideas from his book Atomic Habits and I will link a video all about that conversation with Amanda Taro in the cards. You can take a look at that after this video. So the next thing I might do more of uh, alongside a student that hasn't had the chance to practice is rote learning and often just getting a piece in their fingers during lessons that is catchy and enjoyable and creates enjoyment in our time together is a really satisfying way to do music learning. Another thing that I've dove into and I'll link some of the resources that I use for this is improvising and improv duets. So you'll see behind me the Pattern Play series by Forrest and Nikiko Kinney and that's a resource all the time that I'll play one side and say hey let's use one of your scales and improvise together. I also use a resource like Chillin' on the Black Keys from Wonder Keys that has all these black key duets that even if a student uh, doesn't play those pieces, they can actually just play and enjoy songs using only the black keys and provide satisfying musical experiences that has me less frustrated as a teacher as well. The next thing that I look at is rhythm. So I think rhythm is so important for music makers and I love that we can take rhythm outside of the piece quite often and be really successful and make it easier to play music we love when we get back to the music we're playing. So that might look like the cup games, the cup rhythms from Wendy Stevens. It could look like laptop clap resources from Andrea Dow. Could be body percussion. It could be just diving in with different instruments or on the piano and doing progressive rhythm exercises together. So that's something that I love at all ages for students and find that it removes barriers when we get to the pieces that they're trying to learn. The next thing I make sure I am attuned to is are we actually playing repertoire that students are excited to play? So that led me down a huge exciting rabbit trail of studying music by contemporary creatives and composers and then helping students find what music really connected with them. The next thing I might do if a student showed up and hadn't had a chance to practice and we still wanted to make music is sometimes I'll take a pop favorite and say hey let's break down the chords to this let's have you arrange your own piece and learn some guitar chord symbols and we'll do that right on the spot right together and I feel like one of our quotes is that we're teaching and being taught and I love when students find their own musical ear and often they might hear things that I don't hear so I love working on that together the next thing 
is I love pulling out duets for sight reading and sometimes starting way below a student's level on a duet is a great way to sharpen up those sight reading skills and again remove barriers from their next time that they're at the piano maybe trying to read a score and it will feel more accessible if the sight reading aspect is boosted. The next thing that is so fun to do alongside students and was new for me as a teacher in the last maybe five years was composing together and so that's something too that if a student is burnt out they've maybe had a hard week and they don't even want to play when they get to you and they just need something fun and off of the usual then I'll bring out some composing sometimes and we'll say oh, okay what mood are we feeling what are some things we'd like to include in this composition and we often start with a brainstorming session and maybe choose a key and then we just start fiddling with notes and writing little bits of it down and I often support that process to create as much success in our time together as well and that's something that can be continued week after week in a portion of our lesson and just see success build in that. Now, truth bomb is that if students are have exams, recitals, performance goals, or ensemble playing, practice is going to have to happen in order to reach those goals. So sometimes if those goals are really important to a student and a family, then we start breaking down the steps and micro deadlines that that's required by to make that successful and create success for them or we might reevaluate is that something that works into your schedule right now and be really practical when we look at that aspect regardless I find that our time together is always super valuable filled with musical enjoyment and I love creating passive success whether practices happen that week or not the last thing I love is adding some music theory and music history so we can get into chatting about historical composers or contemporary composers, listening to music together and doing some music theory, which I find also supports when students get back to music learning. So I hope that gives just a few fun ideas if students show up at lessons and they haven't practiced. So let me know in the comments what you love to do if a student arrives and hasn't practiced. And if you're a student listening and you can know that I love to see you whether or not you've practiced or not. We'll see you in the next video.